really know exactly what our early human ancestors looked like, but there's scientific evidence that many of them lived near the oceans. It makes sense if you think about it. Who wouldn't want a home with a great view and plenty of fresh fish and seafood? Many of us will be heading down to the coast for the holidays, and even if you won't be relaxing at a beachfront destination, you can still enjoy a down-by-the-sea dining experience with this week's menu. It feels as though I've hit the seafood jackpot. I've visited Sully, my local fishmonger, and I've found some treasures. Fresh sea bass, crayfish, and prawns. Our theme for today is down by the sea. On the menu, traditional fish curry with baby brinjal, spicy crayfish, and prawn bites. First, I'm gonna hand this over to my mum. I'm actually quite lucky. My mum still shells and cleans all the crayfish and the seafood for me as well. Here, yeah, Paris, you can give this to mum. She knows exactly what to do. Starting out with the traditional fish curry, sunflower oil into the pan. This is a Durban specialty, one of our favorites. Heat up the oil. Spices going in next. First, mustard seeds into the pan. And those start to splatter almost immediately. Wait for them to pop. They have a lovely nutty sweet flavor. Add some cumin seeds. And you can really smell when these are ready for the onions. Let them sizzle, turn a shade darker. Now add some chopped onion. The sauce or gravy is most important when you're making this curry. And that's the reason we use finely chopped onion. They dissolve into the sauce, they add flavor, and they also thicken the gravy or sauce as well. Stir that around, add salt. So about a teaspoon and a bit. Next, some green chili. I like quite a spicy fish curry. That's how it's traditionally made. I've run out of curry leaves. I'm a bit sad, but this curry is still going to be really delicious. I'm a Durban girl and my granddad used to love to go out fishing. Quite spoiled, really. I've had the freshest fish and the most delicious curries. The onions are coming along nicely. And while I'm waiting for them to brown, slice up the brinjals. And I'm cutting these into quarters, but not all the way through. I want them to remain whole still and hold their shape, just into quarters like that. And I don't cut them in advance. I don't want them to turn dark in color. By slicing them like this, you get the flavor. And I've roughly allocated about one per person. The onions are just about ready. Stirring in the ginger and garlic paste. That goes into the side of the pan. I prefer more garlic and a touch of ginger in a fish curry. Add three tablespoons of red chili powder. Fish curry is always quite spicy. And heat the chili, but don't wait for it to change color because it does burn quite easily. Add the brinjals. You don't need to sweat these. And stir to coat. Chopped tomato. I'm using super ripe tomatoes. They should be red, plump, and juicy. Stir the tomato through, and to this, cumin and coriander, and a large pinch of turmeric, and stir the spices through. Simmer for about five minutes until the brinjals are slightly tender, and the tomatoes cooked down into a thick paste. It's been a few minutes. The brinjals have softened slightly. Careful not to overcook them. We don't want these to turn to mush. Next, tamarind. Just dissolve some tamarind in boiled water. It's quite a dark paste. Adds a lovely tang to this. Stir that around. Next, boiled water. Always add boiled water. Once you add hot water to this, the onions dissolve and it forms the sauce almost immediately. You can see the oil starts to separate in the sauce. Now add the fish. They're really fresh. And fish should always smell like the ocean, not like fish. And gently cover. Try not to stir this too hard. Sprinkle a touch of sugar over. Leave the fish steaks to simmer for five minutes and switch off the heat. Remember not to overcook this. And it's not an old wives' tale. Fish curry is always best cooked a day in advance. It gives it time to absorb all those lovely flavors and spices. Starting out with the spicy crayfish. The crayfish looked massive, but this is what it comes down to. Just about a bowl of it. So when you go into a restaurant and you order about a kilogram of crayfish, 
you're actually going to wind up with just a tiny bit. It is delicious, it is worth it. Sunflower oil going into the pan. This is a super quick dish to make. Crayfish is quite expensive, save it for special occasions. Carom seeds into the pan. This is also called lavage or ajwain. You can get it at any Indian spice store. This is crispy fried brown onion. You can see it's not terribly oily. Soak this in boiled water and blitz until smooth. This is going to give us a really thick sauce and a spice paste that's going to coat the crayfish pieces. Fry off the onion paste and cook it until the oil separates again. Remember we added some boiled water to the crispy fried onion and we need to cook that down. Once the oil starts to separate, add garlic. This is about three cloves of garlic. Fry the garlic until fragrant. Chopped chili. I've got two finely chopped chilies here. A tablespoon of red chili powder. Fry just enough to warm the chili powder but not change the color. Chopped tomatoes. Add a teaspoon of coarse salt some black pepper and for the spices ground coriander a teaspoon ground cumin a teaspoon and turmeric simmer this until the tomatoes form a thick spicy paste the tomato paste is cooked down to this add a touch of boiled water kasuri methi going in this is dried fenugreek, about two teaspoons. You can find it at any spice supermarket or store. And now the crayfish tails. Stir that around gently, and you can see this thick tomato paste sticks to the crayfish, which is exactly what I'm looking for. I'm going to serve this with crusty bread as a starter, and just before serving, garnish with fresh coriander. You can squeeze over a touch of lemon juice just before serving, switch off the heat, I'm going to tidy up quickly and start with the prawn bites. I started making prawn bites from my restaurant days and each day would begin by cleaning, shelling, deveining a batch of prawns. The ones that weren't quite perfect were turned into these lovely delicious snacks. First ingredient we've got here in a mixing bowl is chickpea flour. To that, add some cold water. Stir that around. Break down the lumps and make sure it's smooth. This is a simple and delicious snack. Add a teaspoon of coriander, black pepper, season with salt, say about a teaspoon of salt, to this a pinch of cumin seeds, some garlic, works really well with the prawn, baking powder, a teaspoon, chopped green chili, and I've got some rice here. This is cooked basmati rice. You can use some grated potato as well, fresh chopped coriander, and a little onion chopped. Mix that together. I'm adding a little more water. I've got 500 grams of chopped prawn here. Pop that in. Mix that in. It's literally that simple to make a delicious snack. The oil's hot. Use a tablespoon and drop little spoonfuls of batter into the hot oil. You can check the oil first, just dropping a touch. You can see it starts to bubble up. That's perfect. Ready to start frying. Drop the prawn batter into the hot oil. Remember to always properly heat the oil or else these little bites just absorb the oil and they become too greasy. Take care not to overcrowd the pan. These little bites are puffed up. And if you are making them in advance, half fry them now and just before serving, refry them so they're hot. The prawn bites have turned golden brown. They're ready. Remove them from the oil and pop them into a sieve. This is so the excess oil drains off. You can dab them lightly with paper towel, but don't leave them on paper towel. They will get soggy. A few more going into the hot oil. A prawn bite is a rather glamorous chili bite. And chili bites can be made with leftover vegetables, grated potato, cooked rice, and even prawns. Again, shake the pan, 
quite gently, just to make sure they don't stick. They've popped up to the surface, golden brown. These aromas are driving me crazy. <laughs> I think I need to taste one. Mm, that's really hot, but it's so delicious. The second batch is ready. While that's draining, I'm gonna get ready to plate up my feast. I don't always know what I'm going to cook. I often find inspiration while I'm out shopping. It's down by the sea today. I've prepared a traditional fish curry with brinjals to go with that spicy crayfish. You can serve that as a starter or a main course. And to start out the meal, we've got delicious prawn bites. You can find these recipes on the Mela Facebook page. I hope you enjoy them as much as I do.